Welcome everybody to our first look at Life is Feudal Forest Village and I just want to make a quick point here uh, because I've been reading like comments and other videos and discussion boards and various other sources of information about this game and for quite a while there's been a lot of comparisons drawn between this game and Banished and can I see it? Of course I can see it. Um, Banished is one of the main games that I play on my channel. Um, does that bother me? No. Um, and why, you may ask the question? Because a lot of people probably would be annoyed by the fact that they could say it's a clone or a rip-off or whatever negative word you wish to use. But from my point of view, for someone that loves a game in the style of Banished, um, this game has a lot of promise. Because when you actually think about it, the developer behind Banished doesn't really do much with the game. It was a bit of a pet project for him. Um, he has done an update recently, but nothing new has been added to the game really, apart from what the fantastic modders add to the game. Whereas we have this game now, which is, again, like we say, in the style of Banished, but there's a, you know, a team behind this that are actually working on it. They've already pushed out a couple of fixes. Uh, I do believe another fix is coming out later today. So it is a little bit bare bones from what I've seen at the moment. There's still a lot more to be added, but the opportunity, and that's all I want you to think about when you when you watch this game, the the opportunity and the possibility of what it can become. So I I don't see the point in any negativity. Um, if we get to a year down the line and the game is still kind of like this, then yeah, sure. I mean, I think I have a little bit of a rant at that stage too, but I think we just have to give it a chance. Uh, and that's that's all I'm going to say. Um, I'm not going to mention Banished or any other generic city building game um, from this point forward. Um, these first couple of episodes, I'm probably only going to make five to ten episodes just while we get used to the game and we talk about some of the things that are in the game. I'm not going to go for a full on series just yet. And, and that's a lot to do with what's actually in the game at the moment. We'll see kind of what's coming up. We'll We'll let them kind of iron out a few of the creases that they currently have uh, right so first and foremost um, the developers behind this are Mind Illusion they're an indie uh, developer uh, much like a lot of the games that I play these days um, and I think it's quite a beautiful game uh, I don't know if it's my graphics card or not but this kind of this kind of misty foggy haze you get I get stripes going across the screen I don't know if it'll show in the recording it kind of happens when I do that and I can see it Again, that could be my system, it could be optimization. I'm not too sure what actually causes that. But other than that, it is really, really beautiful. I mean, I'm used to this kind of view in most of these sorts of games. I mean, you could go back as far as the settlers, you kind of get this kind of look. But to be able to kind of come down and really look in the third person view, and that kind of brings me on to the next thing. You click on someone and click their portrait, you can actually be them. I mean, <laughs> how fantastic is that? I, I mean, I'm really hoping that this game does get a lot of decoration stuff because I think it, from this point of view, it's really going to make it look really nice. Now, I'm not sure why it's flickering so much. I think that could be to do with my recording software. It wasn't juddering that much before. So, yeah, that could be that. So I apologise for that. I'll have to tweak that and figure that out myself. But... How beautiful. And the thing is, you can actually go and do stuff. So you can go and explore. You can go and pick things up and take them to a building site. You can chop a tree down. I don't know. I just... To me, that is that is awesome. That, that's one of the, the main things. The point of difference uh, for me so far about this game is that. And I think it's great. If I can remember how to get out of the position. There we go. Right, um... I do believe the ecosystem of this game is quite um, interesting as well. So we'll have farms later on. Um, they can suffer from droughts. They do need water and we've got a well here. So the farmer will get water. Um, if they're too wet, so if you've got a lot of rain, the farmer will also do something about that to try and stop uh, the, the plants from getting waterlogged. And at the same time, um, there's wild animals which can also come and and kind of attack some of your I don't think I think they'll attack your crops so much but maybe things like chicken coops and and things like that so 
There's a lot to be aware of. You could call them mini disasters, I guess, but it's going to add that realism. And on the line of realism, I do believe there is a day-night cycle. I've only played the tutorial, so I didn't get to the point of it switching to nighttime. I think that's only for an aesthetic purpose. I don't think it has any real kind of impact on the game at this stage, but still. It's something I like to see in a game, just just from that immersion point of view. All right, let's unpause it. Yeah, it's a little bit stuttery, I don't know, again, not so bad now. Now I've unpaused it, I think it could be to do with my software. Uh, but we have to bear in mind, this is early release. So, um, we have some shacks, what else do we have? We have a barn, and we have a warehouse. So, we got a homeless person straight away, which is identified by this symbol and easy enough <laughs> the homes are the same symbol so we'll go straight in here now we've already got shacks I'm going to build a, a small house and we'll we'll explain why um, the good thing here it gives you a little bit of information anyway so it's a medium sized living space above average pregnancy chance now there's something interesting which we will speak about it can hold five people and it has a happiness of 10 and strength of 110. I'm not sure what the strength is for. Maybe that's to do with things like tornadoes and affecting it. You could also do with some builders. So let's get this up and add some builders. I know we said we weren't going to talk about Banish, but if you think that I'm finding my way around this UI very quickly, because it is very similar in that sense, it's very clean, isn't it? So again, last thing, last thing, we won't say any more. So we'll let that build. Um, right, the difference in the houses, from what I've researched, is the shack, there's less chance of people having children. Uh, the more happy they are, the more space they have, the more likely they are to have children. So shacks are fine, but obviously houses make more sense. You can upgrade the houses. Um, I think we can upgrade this one. So that's a small house, we've got a normal house, and obviously it shows you all the different resources there. I'm not too sure what they all are yet. What's that one? Times 140, I think it's that. That's all, okay. So we've got a hostel. And the models are quite beautiful as well, actually. I must admit, I need to speed the game up a little bit. My one peeve so far, more so than anything else, and we'll ignore little, little graphical issues and um, those sorts of things, is... I hate it when I have to use the WASD key to move around. That really, really does gripe me in games like, like this, or any kind of construction game. I just, if I hold down my right mouse button to rotate, perfect, but I like to be able to hold the left mouse button to scroll, or even edge scroll. There's no facility for that. Now whether that's an oversight or something that's coming, I don't know, but yeah, I, I, I struggle with this. I, I get it for third person view when you're controlling someone, Makes perfect sense, but at this stage, no, it, it's rod frustrating. Okay, so what have we got here? We have six adults, two teenagers, and two children. No idle villagers, and no hungry villagers. I'm guessing that's the temperature. We've got spring, year one, and the town of Amplefuff. One thing I noticed when generating the uh, town names, and that is a randomly generated name, is that a lot of the town names seem to be British. And I'm going to say British because I saw some Welsh ones in there as well. So, kind of interesting. I don't quite know how it works. I don't think it's too random. Even the names are quite quite English. I mean, Lachlan is Scottish, I do believe. Diego is probably more of a Spanish name, I guess. Rachel. Yeah. So, that's that's kind of fun. Not, they're not too difficult to say. Well, some of them are. Okay, so next thing, what do we need? We need some food. So let's let's go for fishermen. Now you can see the fish in the water. Oh, there we go. Yep, there's some swimming around. And we've got a nice deer over there as well. I'm just thinking, we've got an area of effect, it looks like. The best place for this is probably going to be somewhere out here. We will talk about the terraforming system as well at some point. Because one of the most slightly annoying things, I guess, is if you look, the land isn't flat. So, if I want to put in a a hunter's cabin, you can see here it's, it's going red to say it won't go in, because there's a little divot in the ground. And when you go further up, it won't place. The buildings, 
won't automatically kind of flatten these little bumps. Now, for me, that, that, sh that should happen. If you go to place it there, it should be like, the game should think to itself, okay, it's not perfectly flat, but I can deal with that and I'll flatten it. However, you have to come into the tool and you have to, is that raise lower, create a slope, flatten the ground. Oh, there we go. I've only used that one so far. I'm not going to put the hunter there anyway, but we will... I think we will flatten it just to, to make a point. So you just drag a grid. It's quite easy to use. And they'll come and remove the rocks and things like that. And then they'll they'll come and flatten it. So how are we doing? Right, we've got our house. We've got Natasha. I think some people have moved around. Yeah, they have. Okay, so that's that going. Where did I put my fishing dock? That's there. Excellent. So, I'm not sure, I mean, I kind of read up, I do believe the things like the bears and the wolves can attack your citizens. I've not seen them do it in the tutorial so far, but you will see like grizzly bears and things wandering around. The hunters um, will take care of those. I do believe as well that if you build too close to them, the animals will move further away into the forest as well. So, some interesting mechanics going in the background. We'll probably notice them more as we play. I think. Do we need a hunter next? I think it's probably worthwhile. There's another source of food and safety as well. So if we kind of go for somewhere like there. So there you go. Meats and hides, um, pasture defending, number of workers, and action radius. So that's the area they're going to deal with. So we need to put some pastures within that area as well. And that will also help us, I guess, when it comes to making clothes because of heights. We will also need some resources. That's a warehouse, a barn. There is there is fair, a fair few buildings. I might have, have sold it short, but at this stage it is fairly basic. But I guess once you get things going in that balance, we'll actually see what's happening. I'm wondering if we should place this somewhere nearby. Because we want the farmland within this area of the hunter. But I think if there's more forest, there's probably more likely to have creatures nearby. Creatures. They're not really insects, are they? Probably animals would probably be a better choice there. So we've, we've potentially got food. We've got wood, which then means we need firewood. Would that be a, a lumberjack? I'm guessing it might well be. Let's have a see. Are there roads? What's that? Okay. I don't know what that is. Some people are probably going to laugh at me. <laughs> I've never heard of that before. That's a new one to me. I don't know if the lumberjack is needed to chop down the forest or not. Okay. We'll, we'll skip on that. Let's speed the game up. As you can see, I said day-night cycle, so... It's a bit of a hazy night, but... There's a bear. Oh. I, I do love this view. This is going to make some nice screenshots, if not anything else. <laughs> okay, so we've got this. So how many people have we got spare? We've got a few, so... If you do the tutorial... Um, I can't think who I watched. I was watching somebody play it. It might be Montenero Gaming. And he said that if you kind of divert away from exactly what it's telling you to do, you'll probably cause yourself some issues with the tutorial. It might crash or not kind of work the way it's supposed to. So if you do do it at this stage, follow it to the letter. But they do point out that if you have three people in here, or even two, once it's full, one of those people will take the food. And there you go. Speak of the devil. They're going to take it to our barn. And this person is going away for whatever reason. I'm not too sure. They've gone home. Okay, so you've got their happiness, their clothing, and their tools. So, I don't know if this kind of degrades over time, or whether that's to do with the quality of what they've got. Um, but, we'll, we'll kind of discover that as we go along, I guess. This is their profession. That's where they work. Profession, same thing. And where they live. And that takes you to them. Again, we can take control of them. I've not tried fishing. Let's see if we can. Oh, he's an ugly sausage, isn't he? Can we, can we fish? 
Oh my goodness, we can fish. Okay, I don't know if it's automatic from this stage. <laughs> yep, you just click once and it does it. What happens if we get a better view? Oh no, it still looks down. I'm guessing there's still work to be done on this, but that that is quite cool. As you can see down the bottom, you've got my portrait and then you've got a little icon. That's kind of like a rally call. So if you push that while in this view, it will get other workers um, around you to work a little bit faster and it motivates them. Let's, let's come out of this view and let him carry on with his work. So if you're trying to get something done a little bit quicker, that is a fantastic tool for that. Okay, so we'll put one person in here. It'd be interesting to see if he goes for the grizzly bears. Oh, he did. Oh, she did even. I think it was a woman. Where did she go? Is that her? Yeah, it is. It's a woman. So again, we could probably take control of her and go and do the hunting. But she, t she dispatched that bear rather quickly. Boom. <laughs> Headshot. Okay, so that's that one. And so what we've got here, disables, enables planting. Okay, so that one does cut it. So the lumberjack doesn't cut the trees down. But we're now short of workers. So we've got teenagers and babies coming through. Might be worth building another house. And we'll go, again, we'll go, actually, let's show you the upgrade. Can we do it? We can. So we have the little upgrade tool. When you click on it, it tells you what you need. We've clearly not got enough of stuff that we need. So is that stone? Yep, so we're short of stone and lumber. So we can't do that just yet. So let's go for... I can find it. One of these is gathering. So that's collect all. So it's collect all resources. There we go. Now there is deposits of ore and stone. That's the ore there by the colour of it. Actually, it tells you how many is there. And this, I think that's hay as well, is it? Hay, yeah. And you need hay for the thatched roofs. Again, you know, quite a nice little touch there. Oh, that's, oh, I thought that was a huge deposit of ore then. I was getting really excited. Okay. Let's let's do that and see. I mean, I could even take control of one of these people and actually do this. Um, a thing to point out, though, is if you do take control of them, they, do, they still do get hungry and cold, so you cannot potentially kill the person you're controlling if you uh, don't re uh, release their control and let them go home once in a while. There we go. So considering they've all got jobs, they've all pretty much stopped what they're doing to actually do this, haven't they? Maybe not all of them, but... If you can, I think we've got two people in there. Two, three, four. Yeah, so a few of them have come out and actually helped with that. Can we upgrade yet? We're short of wood. Okay, that's fine. Collect wood. So that's going to be seven. How many did we need? Oh, a lot. Need a hell of a lot of wood. Okay. Let's could we remove some of the wood that's around here. 38. That will bring us close. Maybe the forester by that point will have uh, chopped some down. Excellent. I love the music. So peaceful. I think one of them's got a guy singing as well. But it's really, really relaxing. So what else did I find out? Um, last time I read, and this may have changed, but it's only available on PC at the moment. So for those of you in Macs or Linux or Linux or however you want to pronounce it, it is in development. But that's always the case if you don't have a PC, unfortunately. Um, languages. Um, well, there's eight languages available, but I'm not sure if they're all available just yet. But it's most of the languages you'd expect. Um, also, if you go to their website, um, forest-village-game.com forward slash roadmap, it tells you what they're up to. Um, it wasn't very full the other day from what I saw, but it's a good place to kind of keep tabs on what's actually going on. And one of the more interesting things, and considering myself... Noble Rambler and Night Ghost 49 are doing a co-op series at the moment with a game that doesn't have a built-in multiplayer system. This game doesn't either, but there is a potential um, and the ability for them to add it at a later date. So the game kind of does have that option, so they can adapt it to do that, which I really, really, really hope they do because that will add something completely different to the game. I don't know if it 
it'd be like a combat system or whether you could just both build um, two towns on the same map and trade with each other. I don't quite know how it would look, but I think that'd be brilliant. And also at the same time, the modability of the game um, seems to be quite easy. I say easy, not from the point of view of someone like me, but the access to the game um, is, is supposed to be quite a lot. I think 90% of the game AI was moddable from what I read. I don't know if the mod kit's available at the moment, but um, it is on Steam, so obviously the workshop will uh, come into play there. So for those people that like to mod games, um, which is kind of a given these days, I think when games come out and they're not moddable, it's a bit of a bad call on the on the developer's part, really, because that can keep the longevity of a game um, just by community creation. So we'll, we'll kind of see what happens with that in the future. But I think I'm going to leave this first look right here. Um, like I say, I'll probably do five to ten episodes. We'll see how it goes. This isn't going to be the first full series. Uh, we need to get to grips with it first. And hey, we could end up dying. We might, <laughs> we might wipe everyone out. I don't know. We'll see. But let me know what you think in the comments. Um, if you do drop a dislike, and the dislike is to do with the game, please leave me a comment as to why, because I'd be really interested to know, because I know people just pass through and just dislike. Um, if the dislike's to do with me, then you don't have to comment, that's fine. Uh, but I would, would really would be interested, and try and keep any criticism kind of constructive, because we can always pass information back on to the developers and actually try and help them build this game. And that's that's the most important thing, I think. But until next time, as always, take care.